Oh, boy. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's pray. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I thank you for what Annie loosed in this place this morning, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that in this place, in this room for these people that are here, Lord, that you would loose the spirit of uh, revelation according to the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ, that eyes would be opened, ears would be opened, that we might see, hear, perceive, and experience, God, what it is that you are doing in this place. God, I thank you uh, that you are that you are softening hearts, that you are making us pliable and moldable, and that you're actually going to do some work in this place, and you're actually going to begin to shake things up, shake things up, shake things up. Just put your hand on your head real quick. Lord, I just ask that, that an anointing to uh, to understand and move in revelation would be upon these people. The spirit of revelation would actually set itself up inside this building this morning that we would actually be able to enter in to the reality of this promise and this encounter and the mandate that comes with it, God. I just bless their eyes. I bless their ears in every way that they can perceive. I say they will perceive. And all God's people said, amen and amen. So, you're at the Dauntless Conference and all of that stuff, and people are like, what is, what is it? Is it a cloud? Is it a tornado? Is it a storm? Is it a volcano? What is it? Why is there lightning? What's going on? It's so provocative, but nobody knows what it means. And uh, so one of the reasons behind the visual uh, that, that we have, and this is actually the first time we've had this big, cool LED screen in here, so it's kind of fun to have, like, actual, like, visual illustrations are powerful. Like, you know, you can say what you want about John Hagee, but I love his big old plastered up stuff up there and the priest and the ephod and all of that stuff. I, I love the illustrations, and I, I cut my teeth on some Perry Stone stuff, and he's always got some really weird illustrations. We have a cool digital one, so this is a next-gen version of what Hagee and Perry Stone were doing for years. So we're just pioneering a different arena. But uh, several years ago, I was actually, I used to attend Life Center up in Harrisburg. It's my home church. And uh, I'd been traveling with uh, Randy Clark in that season. Um, and I was, I was tired, to be honest with you. I don't I don't know if you've ever experienced Randy or not, but that man runs like 6,000 miles an hour, and he's known, uh, Randy's 66 this year, and he was known for like taking young 20-year-old guys and just causing them to just like have mental breakdown. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's just like the, the pace that he runs at is supernatural is basically what I'm getting. You could take a, a young 20-something. Brian knows what it's all about. We've done the same thing. It's like, Jesus, help us. This is not what you could, you know, like this is not the way you intended it to be. But he just would go at a crazy pace. And I was exhausted. We've been traveling the world going. We were coming from one conference or another, and it wasn't uncommon for me to be like doing 16, 18, you know, sometimes 20-hour days when we're on the road traveling conferences, impartation, glory. And it's amazing. Uh, but sometimes don't don't like think that when you get your promise, there won't be work attached to it, because if you think that when you get your promise, there won't be work attached to it, you'll miss it. Like uh, this is a, like the real talk with you. God may give you everything you ask for, and it might, might be challenging. <laughs> it might require something of you. Imagine that. It's not just oh. sometimes it's like I'm trying to do everything and I can't do it. Help me, Lord. And uh, I'm tired and I'd come in and. One of the, the beauties of um, being an itinerant minister um, and no longer in local church ministry, praise God for you local church ministers and pastors, the struggle is real, I understand. You're in the trenches and stuff like that. I, I did that for eight years. Um, but there's something great about coming into a service or a church and you just sit back and like, I don't have to do anything. Nobody wants anything from me. I'm just going to sit here with my wife and I'm going to drink my latte and I may not fully be paying attention. I know none of you have ever done that. You're like, why are the ministers on their phone? Because they're in 37 services a week. <laughs> and they may not be checked in always. That's okay. None of you were thinking that. I know you're super spiritual. You would never judge us for that. Why are they on Facebook? They should be in the presence of the Lord. None of you thought that. None of you. Liars. It's okay. I forgive you. So I'm, I'm sitting in church. I'm not actually really checked in or paying attention. I'm sorry, Charles Stock, if you're listening, but he's heard me tell this story, so he knows. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, this is great. 
I'm in a service. I don't have to prophesy. I know you're probably like, oh, well, you get to prophesy. Well, sometimes you have to prophesy. Sorry. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes you're just tired and you're burned out. And sometimes it's good to sit and enjoy your family and just relax and receive. Rest is part of the kingdom mandate, too. Creativity requires rest. You need to have cycles of creativity. You need to have cycles of rest. And if you don't have rest in those cycles of creativity, the creativity will dry up and you will dry up and you'll feel like you're dying. So rest every once in a while. That was free. That's not part of the message, but it is free. So you can have it. And I'm sitting there enjoying my time, and I'm like, oh, this will be great. I'm just going to chill, you know, however long this message is. I'm going to enjoy the worship, you know, and I'm just going to sit, actually. I don't want to stand up even. I know that's bad. I was not engaged in any level. Everything we shout at you guys to do and tell you to do, I was not doing a particular moment. And uh, I'm sitting there, and would you believe um, the, uh, that the Charles was speaking on a passage, and uh, he went to the passage, you know, upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And I'm like not primed for an encounter with the Lord. And, and here's another thing too. Some of you guys are working too hard. That's why you're not having encounters with the Lord. You need to go like mow your yard or eat some ice cream or watch like Lost or something like that. And then God will visit you in the middle of normalcy. That's how it happens. I you know, those suddenlies, you're not ready for those suddenlies. Otherwise, they wouldn't be suddenlies. You know, it's like, and, and then after the culmination of all my hard work and striving, God showed up and spoke to me. Never happened for me. Um, I joke about fasting all the time. I've done a lot of fast. I get it. I understand. But for me, fasting is just simply obedience because nothing ever happens for me. I'm glad for you people who have angel visitations and glory and this, that, and the other. I just get hangry and cranky. That's what happens. And the Lord says, you need to grow up. And it's like, I would grow up, but I'm hungry right now. <laughs> Give me a sandwich and something will be better. I promise. That's basically how I feel. But God works it all out somehow. You guys are so spiritual. So I'm here, and uh, he said that. He said, upon this, this uh, rock will I build my church. The gates of hell won't prevail against it. And I was caught up into a full vision, a full encounter with the Lord. I was raptured from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, up into the spirit realm somewhere. And uh, I'm, I'm saying this in jest and in joking, but I'm telling you there's something that's going to be released in this atmosphere as I share the counsel of God from heavenly places about what he aims to do in the days ahead. It actually comes with something that will loose in this room and loose on you and everywhere that I've shared this around the world. It's literally gone around the world with a story. People have had radical responses, and the glory of God begins to just baptize them by whatever. So if you need to respond, I give you permission in advance to respond in whatever that looks like. And sometimes it can get wild, and sometimes it can get crazy. There is no right or wrong response, but there is a response when the King of Glory shows up, and it means that our mortal bodies will respond to something. Oh, Jesus, I feel like it might happen. I don't know. He was, he's the one who came up with this idea, so that's why I'm sharing it. So I'm there, and I get raptured up in the heavenlies, and I find myself, actually, it looks like I'm over an ocean, uh, like way out in the ocean. I can't see land anywhere. Uh, I grew up in South Florida, so before a, a really big storm, the water turns black. You can feel the barometric pressure drop. The temperature begins to drop, and if it's an electrical storm, every hair on your body will stand up, like a big, you know, like midsummer off the Gulf Coast of Florida stor storm rolling in. And I find myself hovering over these heavy, dark, black waves, and uh, the, the atmosphere is electric, and I can hear, like, the crash of thunder and the crash of lightning, and I can feel all of this going on, and I look way off in the distance, and I see this big, whirling, swirling tempest, like this massive, heavy, like, thick storm that's black and dark and flashes of lightning and this, that, and the other, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm hovering over the waters, and... And I was, I, I, I'm aware that I'm in an encounter. Mind you, this is in church on a Sunday morning. I just got raptured up into this moment. I was trying to check out. God's like, no, I have need of you, son. Pay attention. So I release that testimony over you. Some of y'all are going to get raptured, caught up, and it's not the way you were taught about with the scary movies back in the 80s. It's a different kind of rapture. <laughs> different kind. Kirk Cameron is not in this thing, I promise. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So I find myself in that, and I said, uh, Lord, what is that? That's the most intelligent thing you can say in most encounters is, Lord, what is that? Don't try to figure it out. Just say, hey, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. What is this? And as soon as I said it, I was snatched from that place hovering over in through the exterior of the storm, through the storm wall, and into the center of it. And as I, I passed from outside into it, it was like I was walking through this thick veil of like gelatinous glory. I don't know how to describe it, but it was like I stepped into another realm. And when I stepped into 
the wall, I began to feel the tangible glory of the Lord. It's like every fiber of my being, like I was fully alive, that Zoe God, kind of like every fiber of my being was responding to the manifest presence of God. I was terrified. I understood exactly what the fear of the Lord was in this moment. I was trembling. Uh, my, my very uh, spirit body soul was just like vibrating with energy. And as I began to pass through this, as the Spirit of the Lord began to take me through, I saw lightning would flash in front of my face. And as lightning would flash in front of my face, it was like it revealed this swirling rainbow, silver, gold-colored, almost like glitter uh, that was floating around. It was the very essence of the cloud. And I would hear the thunder like it was closer than close. And it shook me and shook my teeth. It shook the, the like my bones. I could feel the presence uh, of the Lord in this place. And uh, I, I'm going through, and, and, I, and I come through, and uh, I, I get, as I'm going through this, I'm hovering, I'm floating with the, with the Lord, I get to these large, very, gate, uh, very big gates. They look like Gothic-style gates, something that you'd see like old English-style gates. They were very aggressive-looking. They were very dark-looking. They were like ancient-looking gates. And I came up on this, and I, I looked on it, and, and on, on the gates, it, it had different emblems and insignia. And uh, like if you see a monument in the United States or anywhere else, in it, a historical monument, say this is here for this reason or this is established by the authority of whatever. And in this, I, I began to read on it, and I would see things like uh, pornography and sexual addiction and drug addiction and, and uh, murder and violence and rage and depression and all of these things. All these heavy level like sins and things that keep people in bondage. And it said, here by the authority of. And it said all of those things. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, this is, uh, these are the gates of hell and this is a storm of my glory. And I felt like when he said it, I just feel it shook me to the, my very core. And uh, I, 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 was, I was reeling from all of this, and very intense, very intense, and, and as he said that, I, I again was raptured from that place back outside of it. I could almost like feel like I got you know, sucked out of the glory, and I'm standing outside. And now that I'm outside, I can see the, the glory, the, the glory of the, in the storm beginning to swirl and whirl, and I can see the tops of the gates sticking out of this storm of glory. Again, I heard the Lord say, this is, uh, this, these are the gates of hell, and this is a storm of my glory. I'm sending a storm of glory to the gates of hell, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And it was as if those words had initiated some type of conflict within, uh, like this war between heaven and hell, this, this, this battle between life and darkness. And I'm standing outside, and as I see it shaking, um, I'm, I'm hovering back where I initially was. I actually hear the Spirit of God come up and whisper in my right ear. A lot of times if you're in a dream or a vision or an encounter, the Holy Spirit is actually the one who's whispering over your ear. The one you can't see but you feel comforted by it, that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came and said, you know, don't be afraid. Stand firm. And I'm like, oh. And then I was like, oh, man, that normally means that I'm going to need that. You know, <laughs> like, uh-oh. He said it again, and I was like, oh, no. And I can see the gates rattling and the storm rolling and the thunder and the lightning crashing. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be bad. He said it again. He might have said it three times. I can't remember. I just know that I was concerned. And all of a sudden, as I'm, you know, standing there just trying to be as just fake it till you make it, right, be as tough as you can. I see one large paver stone launch over the gates, from behind the gates towards me. And I can tell, because I'm pretty good at guessing a trajectory, this thing is coming for me. And I felt the Spirit of the Lord again, stand firm, don't be afraid. And I see this golden, like translucent, big paver stone, like this thing would have killed me if it would have hit me. It gets there, and when it gets halfway, it's like a thousand other ones start launching, and they're all coming my direction. If you've watched like a medieval movie when all the archers begin to loose their arrows, it's like a whole bunch of people were throwing stones at me from behind this. And I felt the Lord stand there, be strong, don't be afraid, and I stood and I was afraid, <laughs> but I was acting like I wasn't afraid, but he told me to be strong. And I'm standing there, I'm standing there, and this thing is coming, I'm telling you, this thing is lined up straight from my face, and I'm like, I feel like I'm probably going to die. I could feel the intensity of the moment. I knew that something intense was happening. And I stood there as strong as I could with as much resolve as I could, and I'm waiting. And when it gets right here, it's like it hit an invisible wall. I mean, we're talking, this thing was whipping, whipping, and then all the other ones hit, and it was like the Matrix. I know you guys are like, this guy just had too much pizza the night before. This is all this is. It's actually an encounter with the Lord. And they froze in midair, and they began to rotate slowly. It was really wild. And as I looked, I saw there was inscriptions on each one of these stones. I was completely, I was like, this is crazy. And as I began to read them, uh, it was 
Bible verses, actually, with scripture that people generally take out of context. You know, the stuff you see on bumper stickers or high school yearbooks, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or, you know, God will give you the desires of your heart. And it was actually a lot of core scriptures that are life-giving, but outside of context, they rob you blind of your destiny. And, uh, and I saw this, and I, and I felt like the Lord whispered, said, this is misapplied, uh, out-of-context scripture that the enemy has been using to batter and uh, disorient the body of Christ and their destiny, and it's actually keeping them from getting where they need to go. And as if he said this, I just heard this, this crack, like this sound. I don't know how to describe it. There was something that shifted, and all of a sudden, it was like an, an army of invisible angels began to take all of those stones and lay them where there was no way. There, became, there began to be a way. And this word, these words of God, the word of God, scripture that was out of context, that was being used to batter and disorient the body of Christ, all of a sudden the Lord is taking the things that were being used as an arsenal against him and actually putting them under, under the feet. The Bible says his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. You know, and there's this idea of this is the way walk in it. And there was this golden translucent floating road that was going from where I was into the, the storm of his glory up into the gates of glory. And the Lord had said before, I'm sending a storm of glory to the gates of hell and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So sometimes we wait for a word. Other times we have the word and he made a way. So then we just have to partner with the word. So I'm standing there and I'm like, all right, the Lord said this is what he wants to accomplish. I'm his son. I'm his ambassador on earth as it is in heaven or wherever we happen to be in this moment. I'm going to do what he said to do. And I could feel this presence behind me. And I was like, oh, I turn around. There's an army of like sons and daughters of the living God. We're talking like militant, like ready to run and throw down for Jesus. And we pull like this Braveheart moment, right? You know, like freedom, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm running, I'm like, I'm, I'm expecting when we get into the cloud, we're going to see the hordes of hell. It's going to be bloody, it's going to be messy, it's going to be exhausting. We take off running, we run down this, this thing, I believe it was a representation of the highway of holiness. If you look in the Old Testament, there's a straight, smooth path, every high place low, every low place high, a straight, smooth path, the king of glory can come in. That's what it's, it was a representation. And we begin to run, we begin to run, we get into the storm of glory, I feel the presence of God, and there's just energy, and you can feel all sorts of stuff going on. All of a sudden, we come before these gates, and I'm telling you, these gates are intimidating, they're not small. You know, I'm not a huge guy. I don't know if you can tell or not. I'm not like a towering bodyguard or anything like that. I'm 5'8 on a good day when I have my nice high heel boots on. And if the camera angle's right, I don't look super short. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, but we're running up, and all of these people there, I'm thinking there's going to be bloodshed. There's going to be a lot of blood, blood, sweat, and tears and all of this stuff. And I get up to the, 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 the gates of hell, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I step back, and I'm like, well, he, he said, you know, the gates won't prevail. Well, for a gate to prevail, I don't know if you know this, but a gate is not an offensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. So for a gate to not prevail, you plunder what's inside the gates. That's how that scripture works. So I'm standing there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to kick this thing with everything that I got. We don't have a battering ram or anything. So I step back, and I go with all of my might, and I go to pick my foot up, and I kick it. And I almost dislodged, I remember feeling the actual pain of my leg hurting because I overkicked, because I felt like this is going to take several tries. Um, parents in the room, you ever have like baby gates and you like try to open them with your hip and sometimes you think they're latched, but they're not latched and you just do one of these numbers <laughs> and, and you end up in the kitchen or wherever you're trying to go. I kicked these huge, you know, like nearly 20 foot iron gates open with my foot and it felt like I slipped through a baby gate on accident. And, and I, I want to note, too, that at this point, right in front of the gates, it's like the thick presence of God was there, the glory, the Shekinah glory of God, like that honey type of presence. Some of you experienced, some of you are about to experience it. Some of you are sneaking up on you right now, and you don't know what that is, but it's God. It's okay. This thick veil was right there. It was, it was even darker and thicker there, but it was actually the goodness of God. And when I kicked it open, I expected, you know, again, warfare. But what happened was as soon as I kicked it open, myself and all of the people that were behind me, we had to get out of the way. And it was like the floodgates open, and we actually loosed captives that were in captivity, in bondage to you know, death, hell, and the grave. And what happened was as they ran 
through the gates of hell, through the thick veil of the glory of the God, there was instant, sovereign, spontaneous deliverance that began to happen. And I saw, I saw prostitutes, I saw drug dealers, I saw murderers, I saw uh, gang lords and this, that, and the other. I saw them running through that. And as soon as they walked through, it's like their whole countenance changed, their, their clothing changed, everything about them changed. And they went from being murderers, thieves, prostitutes, to apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And the Lord was saying that I'm, I'm sending a storm of my glory to the gates of hell, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And one of the things that the Lord is not looking to do in 2019 and beyond is he doesn't need more gifted teachers. He doesn't need more gifted speakers. We don't need more anointed worship. We desperately need the glory of God to come crash into the darkest of places. And the reality is I'm telling you, and I came to tell you, and I feel the unction of the Lord that I'm supposed to share this, that that. The, the, the greatest glory you will experience in your life will not be inside of the four walls of the church. The greatest glory that you will experience is in your respective sphere of influence. But for some of you, you will actually go into literal prisons and you will see the glory of God begin to manifest. For some of you, you will go into men's ministries and women's ministries in prison. You're going to start to see creative miracles. You're going to start to see things such as HIV and hepatitis and all of these diseases burn up under the fire of God because the glory is not reserved and relegated for the four walls of the church. He aims to get the glory out there and into the streets. I'm telling you that in, in some, of, some of the cases, the Lord is looking to lose his glory in, in orphanages and, and social, um, social reform and school systems and this, that, and the other. And I know that, that the enemy would love to make a big deal about everything that he's doing in the earth. But last time I checked, God is still on the throne and everything is under his feet. And if I'm seated in his lap, then everything that used to be over my head is under my feet. And actually intercession and actually loosing the kingdom and loosing the glory of God looks a lot more like relationship and a lot more like light standing up and manifesting arise shine your light has come these people ran out of the depths, the pit of hell. I'm telling you, you're about to see some of the most radical conversions the earth has ever seen like that. Those Saul to Paul conversions are going to start happening in waves, in waves, in waves. And the church needs, I, I feel like the Lord wants to like talk to the church real for a little bit. You're going to have to get your works-based salvation kind of garbage out of the way because some of the people that God is looking to use in the days ahead are going to offend every sensibility that you have because God is not interested in you earning it. God is not concerned with a way that seems right to him. And he is not interested in that. It's not that those things don't matter. But God is about to do a quick work. He's about to do a quick work. It's by his glory, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish these things. Hallelujah. They ran out of the gates of hell through the glory of God onto the highway of holiness immediately. And it's like as they ran, I saw them with backpacks. This is the greatest thing in the world. I saw them with like backpacks and knapsacks. And I saw uh, blueprints and plans and this, that, and the other. And while they were in captivity, they got the blueprints and the plans and the wiles and schemes of the devil. And they took them with them when they left. And when they walked up the highway of holiness outside, they began to gather in other factions. And they got together. And they got together around these plans. And they said, hey, there's other gates over here. And there's other gates over here. And there's there's other gates over here, and the thing that used to keep them, and I feel the Holy Ghost in this room, the thing that was keeping them in bondage was the same thing that they were going to use to set the other captives free. And I came here to tell you this afternoon that the Lord is sending, oh my goodness, he's sending a storm of his glory to the gates of hell, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I don't know if you've read the Bible, but when you get around the throne of God, it is actually surrounded in a storm. And I'm telling you that it's not about our ability, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The, the throne of God is mobile. It moves about. The eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro across the earth. And I'm telling you that in some situations, we have thought that it was our pull on him and our call on heaven to come and actually while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself we are about to see a release of glory the likes of which the earth has never seen but it may not happen inside the four walls of the church, which should be encouraging to most of you because only like 3% of people are platform ministers. Only like 3% of people are evangelists. But I'm telling you in the traditional capacity, but some of you may have a mantle on your life 
the size of Dr. Martin Luther King or Amy Simple McPherson or uh, Billy Graham, dare I say, but maybe you'll never fill an arena. Maybe you're just supposed to go into businesses and corporations and release the glory of God. Maybe the glory of God is about to be released in homes. Maybe it's about to be released in hospitals. Maybe it's about to be released in school systems. What does the glory look like on you? (laughs) Time will tell. What does the presence of God look like on you? We've been so concerned for the last 10 years with trying to rebuke all the storms. I would propose to you that maybe God is the storm in your life. Maybe you need to harness the power of that thing and set the captives free. Maybe, oh, no. <laughs> Woo. Maybe the opposition that you have faced is the Lord himself, and if you would simply bend the knee, you would actually be able to partner with what he's doing rather than resist it for your own purposes. The glory of the Lord is about to, you know, uh, Habakkuk says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. God is unlocking minds. He's loosing that, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, so that you can actually have a working understanding of the glory, that you could actually partner with the purposes of heaven to see his kingdom come and his will be done. The vision that Ezekiel had where the water came out and came out from the temple, it got deeper and deeper and deeper the further away you got from the temple. Your encounter here, your experience here is to be shouldered, is to be taken and taken out to the least and lost. I'm telling you, God is about to release exploits in people in this room. Just close your eyes and hold your hands out real quick. Why don't you do that? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Revelation 4, 1 through 11. Just listen and let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you. Revelation 4, 1 through 11. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you some things that must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like Jasper and Sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, and it appeared like an emerald. Around the throne there were 24 uh, thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders, thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes, front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like that of a calf, the third had the face of a man, and the fourth uh, was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes all around them, and they do not rest night and day, day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their thrones before uh, cast their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by you they uh, by your will they exist and were created and i just ask in the name of jesus father that you would lose a tangible awareness of your glory and of your presence and of your ability in the impossible situations. Would you loose it even now, Father? Lord, I thank you for the, the systematic deliverance that has been taking place since last night in these, your people. Lord, I thank you for the systematic revelation of Christ in them, the hope of glory that is being laid flat before their feet so they can taste and see that you are good. Lord, I pray right now, even as Annie just released it in the previous service and in the previous message, that you are doing a new thing, that you are doing a new thing, that you are doing a new thing. I thank you for what you've done in seasons past, God. Would you teach us how to partner with the storm that is you? Would you teach us how to position ourselves for greater glory in every arena? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Increase your glory. Increase your presence. Increase your fire in these, your people, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Those of you who feel called into the justice system, stand to your feet. Whether it be the justice system by way of laws and judges and and uh, lawyers and this, that, and the other, or social justice, please stand to your feet. Social justice is a call. Implementing systems that represent heaven here on earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would send angelic messengers in this house, even now, to distribute gifts and mantles and mandates on these, your people. Lord, would you put in their hands the tools necessary to fight the battle right now in the name of Jesus. Father, would you loose your glory? Would you loose insight and understanding and language and excellence of speech? I even feel like God is even giving you the verbiage and the language uh, to reach an entirely different people group than the church has ventured into before. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. You even see the hand of the Lord. It's almost like he's dipping into a reservoir of oil in heaven, and I saw him smearing it on your lips. I saw him smearing it on your lips. And it's like your, your lips are going to drip with revelation from heaven and, and situations that have lacked solutions for decades and decades. I see places actually where you will go and release the, the financial provision of heaven where things that are bankrupt and in the, in the red, in the red, in the red. I actually see the Lord giving you a dream in the night and say, have you tried this? Have you tried this? And the Lord gives you social, uh, social uh, solutions, economic solutions for social scenarios. I see reform coming to adoption and, and, and even, even homes for children and stuff like that. And I see actually reform even for prison systems and this, that, and the other. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this place. Systems that don't keep people in bondage, but systems that empower people to be who they were called to be. Lord, loose it in this house right now in the name of Jesus. More on them, Lord. More on them, Lord. More on them, Lord. More on them, Lord. If you're in the school system, you're a teacher or a professor of any level, please stand up right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just hold your hands out, whatever it is for you to receive. Lord, would you loose that in this house over them? Would you loose glory over them right now in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For you, it's different. For you, it's different than the oil. I see the Lord actually beginning to visit you in the night and hand you a scroll with segments of your destiny that you've not read about yourself. I feel like the best and most significant prophetic revelation that, you're, that, that, that is upon your life is about to come into play. I feel like in the night, it's almost as if angelic messengers are coming to you with scrolls in their hand. And it's chapters of your life that have been held back because you weren't ready to receive them now. But I actually see the Spirit of the Lord giving you wisdom and insight and understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see something special and something unique in the air of special needs and special education that's even being loosed in a few of you. I feel like God's giving solutions, and they're, they're, not, they're not traditional Western thought solutions, but I actually see the Spirit of the Lord actually going to take you on a, a, a meandering path, if you will, of, of wholeness. And I actually see uh, uh, people that, uh, children that are suffering, and, and people that are suffering with, with OCD, and even in some cases schizophrenia, in some cases bipolar disorder. Actually, I, feel, I see a common link uh, that, that's in those things that can be resolved, but it's on a holistic level that God's going to give you an understanding of and you can implement it hallelujah 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 for one of the, you that's really strong is that one of you that seems way stronger than the other make yourself known this is one of you work with special needs or or or, or, or uh, uh autistic children or or or, or at-risk children is that any of you that's standing is that you okay there's something very special and for you there's something there's something tied to it i don't know if you're doing it yet but you you're looking at me with the maroon shirt on there's something there's something that's coming with that there's a major there's a major breakthrough too but it's it's a relational breakthrough it's a i, I just see love and care and comfort over you there's something very unique about the anointing on your life to love and to mother to love and to mother for you there's strategy being released god i thank you for what you're doing would you mark them now god by your glory would you mark them now by your presence and fire i thank you god for others of you, it's just reform. It's just reform. It's just broken and cracked systems that need to be revisited. It's broken and cracked systems that need to be revisited. I bless them now in the name of Jesus. I bless them now in the name of Jesus. Do I have military police and uh, people like that in the room? Anybody in military and police? I know you are, John. Is there anybody else? Yeah. Thank you, Father. 
thank you, Father. Extend your hands towards this cat right here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Would you lose strategy for deliverance in Jesus' name? God, would you lose strategy for deliverance in Jesus' name? I feel like the Lord is giving you the ability to have that face like Flint, to stare straight into the, the darkest and the worst situations without flinching. But I feel like you're going to be able to do it in a way that doesn't, it doesn't cause you to be calloused and it doesn't cause you to be hard-hearted towards individuals. I actually see the compassion of the Lord beginning to move on you and the mercy of God hitting people even as you, you move about. And I actually see uh, that there is going to be a sovereign deliverance type of ministry that, that's even on your life. The presence of God is about to rest on you so strong that, that you're going to see that people that, that are just afflicted and demonized, you're going to see the demons lift off of them. They're going to get next to you, and they're going to be again to experience the freedom in the atmosphere of heaven, and it's going to be maybe the first time they've ever felt it. It's going to be maybe the first time they've ever gotten a taste of freedom. And I feel like the Spirit of the Lord would have you know that you need to be ready with an explanation as to the hope that you have inside of you. I Actually, I don't know what the uh, the laws are and whatnot. I feel like there's a grace for you to share the gospel with people that, that you deal with uh, firsthand. And there's also this, this tenderness and this compassion. There's something uh, there's something about you, even with children. I don't know what it is. There's something about you and children. And there's just like this thing of children. I see a, uh, you know, we have many instructors, but few fathers, what the Bible talks about. I see a fathering thing on you, uh, a fathering thing on you, a fathering thing on you, in a safe place of refu refuge refuge where people are going to come in and they're actually going to, t time will tell the impact that you have on individuals' lives. And I bless you, man, in the name of Jesus. I bless you and your household in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just begin to pray in the Spirit. Just begin to meditate on the Lord real quick. Because I think there's some things that the Lord wants to loose in this place. And that's okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Teach us to partner with your glory. Teach us to shoulder it and run with it, Father. Teach us to steward provision and resources. In Jesus' name. 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 Every pastor, music minister in the room, please stand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just because significant things will happen outside the four walls doesn't mean significant things won't happen inside them as well. just means that the primary purpose is that we send them out. So, Lord, I thank you for these, these laborers. I thank you for these workers. I thank you for these, uh, these ministers before the Lord and before the people. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, that the next six months would contain the greatest encounters of their life, that, that you would call them up and call them out. I just see this as a season of calling you up and calling you out, calling you up and calling you out, and setting you apart. I even see like there's this shifting and shaking for a lot of you in your respective regions and territories, and I actually feel like you need to be aware that in the next year, there will be a lot of ministries that will actually crumble and fail, but this won't happen to you if you keep your heart close to the Lord and you keep your eyes fixed on Him, and you make the kingdom your number one concern, all of these things will be added unto you. But I decree and I declare over you that there is something that's happening in the next six months specifically. This is calling you up, and He's calling you out. But in the, in the next year, you're actually going to see where the Lord is establishing your steps. He's establishing your path. He's proving to you that upon this rock, for you, man, and upon this rock will I build my church. Not who do they say that. It doesn't matter who they say. It doesn't matter what they say about you and what you believe or how you believe. But who do you say that I am? And what you believe about Jesus will be the defining launching pad in your life and ministry. God, I bless these, your people. Lord, I pray that you would visit them with revel revelation and secrets uh, that they've longed to look into. God, I pray that they would actually be able to taste and see that you are good, that these encounters would be frequent. 
And I'm telling you that the highlights of seasons past are going to be normative in the days ahead. And where it used to be six years and an encounter, I see some of you, you're entering into like every week you're going to have a radical encounter with the Lord and it rewires you. And you're like, I don't even know what's wrong with me, but I'm not okay, but I am okay. It's a beautiful thing. I see the Lord taking some of you, have you seen the game of operation? And I see you on the table and I see the Lord reaching in and pulling out parts and hurt and stuff that you didn't know how to get at and he's changing it and it's going to be weird and it's going to feel funky but he's not going to touch the tweezers to the sides of the thing it's not going to hurt it's not going to hurt there's a grace for inner healing there's a grace for deliverance there's a grace for years of hurt and broken heartedness and disappointment to be washed away there's a grace for forgiveness and not the kind of forgiveness where you bury it under a rug the forgiveness where you can look straight in the face of that individual and it doesn't sting anymore there's no sting of death there's no sting of loss there's no sting of slander. I see the Lord actually silencing slander in this season. We silence. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I see accusations, and I just hear the thundering voice of the Lord, and they fall flat. So be strong and of good courage. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. This man in the coat over here, and you have a blue jacket on the left side. He's full on at you. There's a season of miracles that's upon you. God is about to loose miracles in your ministry and through your hands. I see creative miracles. I see like re reforming of, of, of organs and stuff like that where there weren't organs and then bones where there weren't bones and stuff like that. And miracles, miracles, miracles in the area of, of, of this is for you and it's for somebody else. You'll also see uh, things with uh, the electrical systems in the body being reset by the hand of God. But that's for somebody else as well. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I think it's you in the gray jacket. There's something about people, uh, it, things that, that, that can be as, 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 as minuscule as like uh, hearts being out of rhythm and stuff like that. But I see all things uh, regarding electrical systems in the body. You're going to find that people are going to just start talking to you about weird things you've never heard of, but it has to do with this. It's a foretelling element of prophecy. And I really feel like as you lay hands on them, the Lord has, there, and I even feel like there's encounters with the lightnings of God that are going to reset you, and you will carry an impartation for a rewiring and, and, a, and a different, you know, like, you know, electrical system anointing. I don't even know what that is. And even people who have experienced uh, uh, electrocution in the natural and it's burned them or it's created neuropathy or it's messed them up, I see things to that, that system of the body being uh, rewired and reset as the Lord moves through you. And I would say expect much glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And you in, on the left side, the girl right there, yeah, you. <laughs> Um, there's something, um, yeah, it's like an inner healing, deliverancey type of mercy ministry that's on your life. And I actually see the Lord giving you a grace to go really into the deepest places of men's and women's hearts. And I see actually people getting radically delivered from abuse and trauma and people that were victims of of just violent, uh, even like uh, sexual assaults and rape and trauma and even like uh, just next level trauma stuff that's even resulted. I, I see things uh, that are as severe as uh, uh, DID, disassociative, disassociative associative identity disorder, where the trauma resulted in, in people's psyche being traumatically influenced. I actually see that where you, where you come in contact with that, the Lord is giving you a grace to pray through deliverance and inner healing and see people set free. It's actually going to keep people from dying. A lot of this suicide outbreak and these, these, these demonic thoughts of kill yourself are going to be silenced as you begin to minister. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Once you stand to your feet right now, thank you, Father. 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 One of the things I, I love good worship and I love all of the stuff that comes with ministry, but I love it when it's just somebody speaking plain truth to you and then God's presence either shows up or it doesn't, you know? It's either real or it's not. It's not an emotional state of being. It's the reality, the truth. You know, the truth is a person. His name is Jesus. When he shows up, he brings the whole kingdom with him. Just what I want you to do. Just hold your hands out. If you begin to feel fire, electricity, 
the presence of God, you begin weeping, shaking, experiencing some measure of something you knew, you knew not of, or if even as I was sharing this story, it resonated with you on a deep, 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 deep level, and you can't help but respond, I give you permission to come up here right now and receive a fresh impartation and a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. Don't hesitate and don't try to talk yourself out of it. Don't make something up if it's not there. But if that's you, I just loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy Spirit, would you come in this place? If I could have like five students just follow me around, work with me real quick. This is a, the beautiful thing about a sovereign impartation from the Lord is I don't have to do it. I don't have to do a thing. He comes with the winnowing hand in his or with the winnowing fan in his hand, and he'll burn up the chaff, and, and he'll set stuff. Lord, I thank you right now, but I'm telling you that every time I've ever delivered this, there have been angels present to distribute things, tools, tools, tools that you need for the harvest, tools for what you're building, tools for what you're building, tools for what you're building. There's some Nehemiahs in this place. There's some Nehemiahs in this place. There's some Nehemiahs in this place. Lord, would you put the trowel in their hand and the sword in the other one? Would you put the trowel in their hand and the sword in the other one? Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing. Just loose your glory in this house, Father. There it is. There it is. Watch out. <laughs> Just the presence of God, just the glory of the Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Father. Jesus, come and move through this room. There it is. Yeah, yeah, breaker after breaker, breaker after breaker, breaker after breaker. More, Jesus. More, Jesus. Fire on him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I bless what you're doing. Loose those whirlwinds of glory in this house, fire and glory in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, increase it, Father. Increase it, Father. Increase it, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. For some of you, you get raptured up into something very similar to what happened to me. You're like, I don't know what's happening, but I don't. There it is. 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 More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless these, your people. I bless these, your people. There it is. There it is. Loose your glory, Father. Loose your glory, Father. Sometimes we've conditioned ourselves to do certain things for so long we forget what it's like when he just shows up and does it how he wants to do it. He has a way of doing everything all at once. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. I would say to you that regardless of whether you're feeling or experiencing any of those things, it's not required for the Lord to move on you. So if you're staying back and that's completely fine, just 
loose you to receive what the Lord is doing in this place. Without fail, Jesus himself visits people and takes them back to some of the darkest places of their life and removes the scars and the pain and the hurt of the past so that he can launch people forward into their destiny. Without fail, people get a, like this thing of travail dropped on them and they don't know what to do. Some of you are going to weep and you're going to weep and you're going to weep and you're going to weep. Your heart will be broken for the things that breaks the heart of the Lord and all of a sudden you're going to have authority where you didn't have it before. Some of you have been calloused because of the trauma and even PTSD kind of stuff in your life. You don't even know how to feel or experience anymore. But the glory of the Lord's about to rest on you, and he's about to soften you. He's about to soften you. He's about to soften you. He's about to lose authority through your tears. Thank you, Lord. Broken and spilled out in this place. Broken and spilled out in this place.